Look at our visitors here. Haven't seen them for a while. Our Egyptian geese. When I was swimming this morning, they flew over me. Really low. Thanks be to God they weren't on a bombing trip. Three very different birds we have seen this morning. Amazing the variety in nature. <laughs> this one here is <laughs> sending signals to that heron that this is my territory. Let's go walking a little bit, stroll and chat. Morning. One day we will see every person in glory. We will see them from the angle of God's glory, of their glorification forever. Each person. You know, we are fascinated by the variety of birds and trees, and also of people, but it's just a, a small little glimmer of light in the water compared to the powerful light of the sun what's going to be on the face of every human being to see each human being in God's glory forever where there will be zero selfishness zero manipulation The dignity God has given the human being is amazing.
It's good for us to ponder that and contemplate it so that we have true admiration, true appreciation of every human being made for eternal glory. We get the glimpses, teasers of glory in this life. Maybe the saints get immersion in glory in the sense of, in the midst of the incredible challenges, they wade into the glory. The union with the Almighty, the capturing the mystery. There we can't wade in beyond our depth because we are made for infinite glory. Not for the fake stuff we try to build ourselves here for the real glory. And the text we have today really, oops, I forgot my little, my little, my, my second phone, I left it on the table, the one that I have the text on, it doesn't have a chip, it's my old phone. Can't believe it's over three years since we got this phone, huh? A lot of you helped to get it. And I kept the old one because I can just download the text I need. So I don't have it with me now. It's right now it's in the White House. You know, the White House over there in the bush. White House over here in the bushes. And I left it on the table there. I learned something new the other day. Somebody commented on the post that I was always talking about these beautiful pink flowers, but they tell me these are not the flowers. The flowers are the white ones inside. And I already forgot the name of the, uh, the petals, what they're called in the case of these bougainvillea. These are called bougainvillea, I think from the island in the Pacific from which they came. Some people say it were the Franciscans who brought them here. So let's get back to our text here as much as I remember, but your your friends, O oh Lord, make make known the glory of your kingdom. I think that's the verse in the psalm. And that's a key verse. I was also impressed that Bartholomew is not an apostle that we normally have in our horizon. And it's in interesting that his story is the closing of chapter 1 of John's Gospel. On the other hand, when the evangelists wrote the Gospels, they didn't have chapters. So there's a continual flow. And then the next one, right after that, is the marriage feast in Cana. There's a huge, I presume, catfish there, tumbling here in the water, making lots of noise. So the next one is the marriage feast in Cana, and Bartholomew has just said, what good can come out of Cana? Or out of Nazareth, sorry. And so uh, it's interesting that right there in Cana then is the 
revelation of Jesus' public identity in John's Gospel, in the marriage feast of Canaan, there they saw his glory. And if we jump forward, which to the first reading, so the Gospel is after the thing, but it's still the first, day. we're jumping forward because the book of Revelation is, is that much later again, maybe another generation after John's Gospel. And there we have the heavenly Jerusalem coming down and the 12 foundations are the 12 are the the 12 foundation stones are the 12 apostles and there's one of them is Bartholomew Bartholomew is a very interesting character and his encounter with Jesus, he, first of all, he says, what good can come out of Nazareth? He dismisses Jesus. How many people dismiss Jesus today? And historically, people who dismiss Jesus in their lives and at the end of their lives, they had a big turnaround. But Bartholomew seems to make the turnaround very fast. And he says, when Jesus shows him how he knows him from under the fig tree, some people understand that that's the typical location for the rabbi to be studying the scriptures and maybe there was some particular passage he had been processing there under the fig tree and Jesus says before Philip called you I saw you under the fig tree so Nathaniel is and Bartholomew are, are understood always since the early tradition of the church to be the same person i won't go into the technical reasons for that but um he says uh you are are the son what was it you're, you're, you're the and you are the what you're the basically you're the savior you're the messiah so he goes from dismissing jesus to having a total confession of faith right away because Jesus shows him that he knows exactly what's going on in his interior and in his heart and soul and mind. And nobody could have told Jesus. There was no what's up around. There was no Mossad around. There was no CIA around. There was no source of organized information. The only way Jesus could have known is because of supernatural reasons. And this struck Nathaniel so deeply. So deeply. He was amazed. And then this guy, fellow from Cain of Galilee, is one of the stone foundation stones of the heavenly Jerusalem. And another one is Philip, the guy who called him. He's just from Bethsaida across the lake here. And another one is Peter and Andrew. And they arrive from the same town as Philip and Bethsaida across the lake here. And, and James and John, you know, it's amazing. Uh, and it's a, it's a wonderful indicator for the eternal glory for which we're destined. And it's not just a big sea of joy, it's every one of us counts and every one of us in our individuality, as well as in a total deep communion. We won't melt into a big cloud of nothing, of, of impersonal. We're cherished and loved forever. We have sufferings and troubles and trials in life. And we should remember that they're just passing. They're for a time. We shouldn't follow their insinuations that they're forever, that they're my definition. No way. Let's leave it like that for today, people. God bless you. What a glorious morning. May you have a marvelous and blessed day. And see you later, alligators.